It may be at morn, when the day is awaking, when sunlight through darkness and shadow is breaking, that Jesus will come in the fullness of glory to receive from the world his own. O oh, Lord Jesus, how long, how long, ere we shout the glad song, Christ returneth, alleluia, alleluia, amen, alleluia, amen. It may be at midday, it may be at twilight, it may be perchance, that the darkness of midnight will burst into light in the blaze of his glory when Jesus receives his own. O oh, Lord Jesus, how long, how long, ere we shout the glad song, Christ returneth, alleluia, alleluia, amen, alleluia, amen. O oh, joy, O oh, delight, should we go without dying? No sickness, no sadness, no, no dread, and no crying. Caught up through the clouds with our Lord into glory. When Jesus receives his own, O oh, Lord Jesus, how long, how long, ere we shout the glad song, Christ returneth, alleluia, alleluia, amen, alleluia, amen. Get your authorized version of the scriptures. Let's start with one verse. Proverbs chapter 11. Proverbs chapter 11. I took your advice, brother. Proverbs 11. Just one verse. Verse 31. Follow me along in the scriptures that we will be going through today. Behold, the righteous shall be recompensed in the earth. Recompense with an S, verb. Much more the wicked and the sinner. Much more the wicked. Oh, brethren, there's so many of us out there who are hurting right now, who don't have the luxuries of life. But I know for certain many are suffering right now. There is a dear brother of ours. I did not ask permission to use his first name, but I am going to. He needs your prayers. Our brother Floyd from out northeast, a dearly, dearly beloved brother. His brother is going to be going home, who is our brother, sometime soon, unfortunately. Unfortunate for us, but yea for him. But yea for him. As a sister, a sister of ours once said, who we will meet eventually. It's like, why do we hang on to this life when we know that we're going to go home to be with the Father? Like I said, I did not ask this brother's permission to use his name, but uh, brethren, Church of the Living God, please pray for our brother Floyd from the Northeast. He, um, he is going, he and his family they are going through incredible hardship right now. And they need your prayers. They need our prayers. Um, 
They need the comfort of the, the only comfort that the Lord could give. Please keep them in your prayers. Also, a brother from Croatia who is greatly sick. Please keep him in your prayers as well. Our dear young brother from Alabama. I hope I have that right. Who is also mourning and getting over the loss of his grandfather. Our dear brother Jeff. Please keep him in your prayer, in your prayers. Um, he's getting resistance on things that he needs right now, not from the Lord, but from the world. And um, his health is deteriorating. Please keep him in your prayers. Please keep him in your prayers. And um, also a dear friend of ours, dear friend of mine, a beloved friend of mine, whose mother has now taken the third of the steel of the Jesuit Pungard. Pray for him, brethren. Please pray for him. Pray for our dear friend, our dear brother. He needs you. He needs us. He needs the Lord's mercies. He needs our prayers. Pray for one another, brethren. Don't neglect to pray for one another. And it is on that... It is on that. Proverbs 11, verse 31. Behold, the righteous shall be recompensed in the earth, much more the wicked and the sinner. You got to remember, the Lord, like I tell you all the time, the Lord is not pointing a gun at your head, you know, forcing you to do this or that. Doesn't work like that. But you also got to remember, the devil is not pointing a gun at your head, forcing you to do this or that. But see, oh, Lord Jesus, how long, how long, how long? We don't know. But as we heard in that hymn, it could happen at any time. Hopefully, none of us will see death or taste of death. I wish it weren't so. And we've talked about that, about death, several times before. And if I can remember, I'll put the links in the video for this, in the description box. But see, people out there have been lied to, been deceived by the Jesuit order with the psychological operation that is going on right now called the Poison Crown and all its variants, okay? Okay. A creation of the Jesuit order. And these people are going to pay. These deceivers, these liars, these people that have brought upon, uh, upon these people this deception. Now remember, God's not force, forcing anything at you at gunpoint. Neither is the devil forcing anything to, on you at gunpoint. These people that are deceived... They have the same kind of capabilities as you, or I, as you or I do, Church of the Living God. But yet, because they are deceived, they're trusting in that deception. These people, the people who have done the deceiving, their time is coming. You're angry right now. I would be too. I would be too. There are those in my personal family, you know, my relation, who have taken the steel of the Jesuit Punyard. And they're lost and they're going to hell and there's no going back for them. They have made their choice. See, you got to remember, there is a big difference between those who have made their choice and those who have not. Those who are just led astray. There is a difference between the two, brethren. We've talked about that before in great detail, okay? But see, the ones, the head of the snake, the head of the serpent, these are the ones, brethren. These are the ones. They're going to pay. They're going to pay, and they're going to pay dearly for it. 
Behold, the righteous shall be recompensed in the earth. Much more, much more, the wicked and the sinner. Why, why do you think the devils are so feverishly violent right now and attacking? Hmm? Why do you think the devils are doing what they are doing? Behold, the righteous shall be recompensed with an S of verb in the earth, much more the wicked and the sinner. Much more. This is what this is the best that these devils have. This today, right now. Because see, those who have made their choice, they're going to hell. They have gone past that point of no return. They're going to hell. But those who have been deceived by those. That those are the ones that we as the church and living God, hopefully the Lord will use us to reach some of them before it's too late. Go to Psalm 94. Psalm 94. This is going to be a light kind of expository. Light, not, not verse by verse, but we're, we're going to have some expository here. Please get your authorized version of the scripture and follow me along in the scriptures. They're going to pay. You wicked devils, you're going to pay for all what you have done. You're going to pay for your lying to children. You're going to pay for your deception. You're going to pay for your deceit. You're going to pay for making the sorrowful go astray in an evil way. <laughs> making the souls that should not live, making them rejoice. And making the souls that should not be sorry, sorrowful. You're going to pay. You know why? Because our God is a God of judgment. Psalm 94, beginning at verse 1. O Lord God, to whom vengeance belongeth, O God, to whom vengeance belongeth, shew thyself. Now, of course, that's, uh, you can reference Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 35, but let's turn from, uh, look at one verse in Romans chapter 12. Follow me along in the scriptures. Like I said, this is going to be a light expository video. Light. Okay? Romans chapter 12, just one verse. One, verse 19. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. And of course, look up on your own time, Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse uh, 35 it is, where the vengeance is mine, I will repay. That's what he's quoting. Vengeance belongs unto the Lord. It's not up to you and I to get even with people. Hi! We got to remember that, don't we? They, see, that's the old man within us, right? You smack me, I want to smack you back. Now, see, this doesn't give over to the ways of pacifism. In, the, in light of direct danger, defend yourself. And anyone talking uh, or preaching pacifism... Uh, turning the other cheek or escalation of force or however you wanted to say it. Who, who's ever preaching against defending your life or the life of your family, preaching against that? They're a heretic devil working for the Vatican and avoid them. Okay? But vengeance, getting even. That, that, that ain't our call. That ain't our call. What was the verse that we started out with today? Huh? What was the verse? What was the very first verse that we looked at? Huh? The very first verse. Come on. The very first verse that we looked at. Proverbs, what was it? 11, verse 31. Behold, the righteous shall be recompensed, verb, in the earth, much more the wicked and the sinner. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, said the Lord. And, and here in Psalm uh, 94, verse 1, again, 
O Lord God, to whom vengeance belongeth, O God, to whom vengeance belongeth, shew thyself. God has shown himself plainly, hasn't he? In creation, in even us, our bodies, that we are made in the similitude of God. We have a spirit, we have a soul, we have a body, okay? We're made in the similitude of God, okay? Like that. You know, the, the retina of the eye, how the eye can focus and color patterns and stuff like that. The complexity of a cell. That's not something that can evolve over millions and millions of years ago in a galaxy far, far away. Uh, by the way, brother, Lord willing, sooner or later, the Lord may guide me on to a video about the gap theory, just so you know, okay? <laughs> I got your email, so it's all good. But God has made it... God has made it plain. God has shewed openly himself and also the way of salvation. It's very simple. It's very plain. You've got to come to him on his terms, not your own. But about shewing himself, turn to Exodus chapter 33. Exodus chapter 33. Exodus chapter 33, verses 12, on to verse 23, to the close of the chapter. This is after, remember this, this is after the debacle, beg your pardon, brethren, I'm thirsty, after the debacle of the golden calf. Excuse me. The golden calf, Okay. Moses goes up on the Mount Sinai and he's taken a while and then people are like, what happened to Moses? Make us gods. And then Aaron makes a, god, a golden little calf and whatnot. And then Moses comes down and it's like, what do these people do to you? And Aaron, he's like, oh, they, they gave me the gold and I put it into this thing and whoop, out, <laughs> out comes this calf. Brilliant. <laughs> Brilliant on Aaron's part. Yeah. Brilliant. This is after this, okay? This is after the debacle of the golden calf and Aaron's brilliance, okay? This is what we're picking up on. Verses 12 unto the close of the chapter in Exodus chapter 33. And Moses said unto the Lord, See, thou sayest unto me, Bring up this people, and thou hast not let me know, and thou hast not let me know whom shall whom thou wilt send with me. Yet thou saidest, I know thee by name, and thou hast also found grace in my sight. Lord, how long? Lord, how long? Now therefore I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, shew me now thy way. Thy way. Not a way that is comfortable to me. Not a way that is preferable to me. No. Shew me thy way. See, that's the problem. God has made his way plain. He has shewed unto you his way. Do you want to go his way? Or no, do you want to go up some other way, huh? You want to go up some other way? Because the way that he wants you to go, you know, the way to the cross... It's a little too difficult for some of you, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah. He's made it very plain. Now therefore, I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, shew me thy way. Thy way. Hold your place here. Proverbs, of course. Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs chapter 3. Come on. Proverbs 3. You probably know what verses. Verses 5 on to verse 7. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. Now therefore I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, shew me now thy way that I may know thee, that I may find, that I may find grace in thy sight. Shew me now thy way. That's in Exodus chapter uh, 33 verse 11 and we're reading in uh, Proverbs uh, 3 verses 5 on to verse 7 okay sorry if I forgot to mention that 
Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Shew me now thy way. He's shown it to you. He has shewed you what is right. What does he require of thee? To love mercy, to do justly, and to follow humbly with your God? Mm -hmm. To walk humbly before him. He's shown it to you. Do you want to go his way? Oh no, that's too hard, yeah. You just believe, so you go up another way, yeah. There's something, you're a good person deep down. You go up another way, yeah. You clean your life up first, you go up another way, yeah. <laughs> and also while we're at this, go to Psalm 90. Psalm 90. The prayer of Moses, as it's often called, okay? Verse, uh, verse 12 again in Exodus 30, uh, 33, uh, verse 13, excuse me. Now therefore, I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, shew me now thy way, that I may know thee, that I may find, that I may find grace in thy sight, and consider this, that, and consider that this nation is thy people. Psalm 90. Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hadst formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Thou turnest man to destruction, and sayest, Return, ye children of men. Thou turnest man to destruction. You've got to be careful what you want. You've got to be careful what you ask for. You might get it. Okay? You read Amos chapter 4 on your own time. He'll, he'll lay these things upon people. It's like, yet ye have not returned unto me. You know, I'll give you a famine. I'll do this. I'll do that to get your attention. But yet ye have not returned unto me. Thou turnest man to destruction. You got to be careful what you wish for <laughs> or what you're asking the Lord for. You got to be careful what you ask for, people. You might just get it. And if your desires are in line with the scriptures and then you get what you desire, praise the Lord. But if your desires pertain to the things that are of this world, oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. For a thousand years in thy sight are but as yesterday when it is past, and as I watch in the night. Remember, our Lord lives outside of our time. There is no time in eternity. Okay? Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, lives outside our construct of time. we got to remember that. Okay? Thou carriest them away as with the flood. They are as asleep. In the morning they are like grass which groweth up. Yeah, man at his best state is altogether vanity. We're going to look at that here in a little while too. Okay? In the morning it flourisheth and groweth up. In the evening it is cut down and withereth, which dances and struts his stuff upon the stage and is to be heard of no more. It is the tale of an idiot. <laughs> Full of sound and fury. Signifying nothing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. For we are consumed by thine anger and by thy wrath are we troubled. More, to, more so pertaining on to the children of Israel during the time of Jacob's trouble. Because we, the church of the living God, we are not appointed to wrath, uh, you know, the time of Jacob's trouble. Thou hast set our iniquities before thee, our secret sins in the light of thy countenance. Ah, yes. Secret sins. They ain't nothing, you can't hide nothing from the Lord. We're, gonna, we're also going to be addressing that here too in a little while too. Nothing is hid from the Lord, Okay. There's nothing you're going to hide from the Lord. You're not getting away with anything. Don't forget that. Hi. Don't forget that. 
For all our days are passed away in thy wrath. We are spent, we spent our years as a tale that is told. <laughs> I was just thinking about that Shakespeare quote. The days of our years are three score years and ten, eighty years. And if, wait, two, four, six, eight. Three score is six, seventy years, excuse me, excuse me. And if by reason of strength they be four score years, eighty, yet is their strength labor and sorrow, for it is soon cut off, and we fly away. You know, yeah, you. I've talked with people who want to try to tie that into a verse to talking about the catching way. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there was some mathematical things that people came up with why for the number of years and stuff like that, but uh, it kind of, uh, it's, it's weak. It's very weak. It's a very weak. There are, there's a lot stronger verses when you want to talk about the catching away. A lot stronger than that. It's a weak verse on that. But anyway, let's continue. Who knoweth the power of thine anger? Even according to thy fear, so is thy wrath. So, teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. What does he say here in uh, Psalm 94? Lord God, to whom vengeance belongeth, O God, to whom vengeance, vengeance belongeth, shew thyself. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Look at this. Return, O Lord. How long? How long? And let it repent thee concerning thy servants. O satisfy us early with thy mercy. That we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Make us glad according to the days wherein thou hast afflicted us, and the years wherein we have seen evil. Let thy work appear unto thy servants, and thy glory unto their children. For our instruction in righteousness, let thy work appear unto thy servants, being reminded of our Lord's salvation. Being reminded that to be absent with the body is to be present with the Lord. going to be going home soon, brother. What a joyful thing that is for you. Sad thing it will be for those uh, who love you. But we got to remember that, brethren. We will see them again. But not yet. And let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us. And establish thou the work of our hands upon us. Yea, the work of our hands establish thou it. Now you got to remember too, during this time under the law, it was faith and works. Okay? Got to remember that. But remember, at the judgment seat of Christ, our works will be tried for our rewards. So, keep that in mind. Back now to Exodus chapter 33. Picking up at verse 14. And he said, after, after Moses said, shoo me, yeah, shoo me thy way. Okay, note that. He said, shoo me thy way. And you read about the prayer of Moses in Psalm 90? Absolutely. And he said, my presence shall go with thee, and I will give thee rest. Come unto me, all ye who are burdened, heavy laden and burdened, and I will give you rest. Okay? And he said unto him, if thy presence go not with me, carry us not up hence. Amen, brethren. Unless the Lord is with you, don't do anything. <laughs> Unless you know it, meaning that we, we can undertake many, many things out of our flesh. And when we do these things that we undertake in our flesh, who gets the glory? We do. But if it's something that the Lord wants you to do, go by his leading. Okay, like this is get, like this is saying to us. And he said, oh, uh, verse 15. And he said unto him, If thy presence go not with me, carry us not up hence. Unless the Lord is behind it, don't go for it. If the Lord is behind it, trust him. 
Okay? For wherein shall it be known here that I and thy people have found grace in thy sight? Is it not that thou goest with us? In this I know thou favorest me, that thou hast not allowed mine enemies to triumph over me. My enemies, they might get a foot in every once in a while, but they could do nothing against us if it, unless it were given to them from above. Allowed. These devils who reject our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, think about that. They can only do unto us what our God allows them to do. And you guys reject our Father. Yeah, roll that one around in your head for a little while, huh? For wherein shall it be known here that I and thy people have found grace in thy sight? Is it not in that thou goest with us? So shall we be separated, I and thy people, from all the people that are upon the face of the earth. Come out from among them and be ye separate. Amen. Amen, amen. <laughs> yes. Yes. God within you makes you separate from that. And the Lord said unto Moses, I will do this thing also that thou hast spoken, for thou hast found grace in my sight, and I know thee by name. Hmm. The Lord knows your name, but yet the devils will call you by your last name. Isn't that something interesting? Hmm. Interesting. And he said, I beseech thee, shew me thy glory. Moses, in this, in this context, Asked to the Lord to shew him two things. Verse 13. Shew me now thy way. Shew me how you want me to walk. Shew me how you want me to walk. And he said. I beseech thee. Shew me thy glory. When the Lord shows you his way. In the scripture. And you walk according to his way. Shew me thy glory. You will see the glory of the Lord. When you do it according to the way he wants you to do it. So in this context, twice, two things the Lord asked for, uh, the Lord, excuse me, that Moses asked for. Two things he asked of the Lord to shew him. His, the way, his way to go and his glory. And for us, we will see the glory of the Lord by walking in his ways. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before thee, and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee. And here's, the, here's a great definition of what grace truly is. And will be gracious to whom I will be gracious. Unmerited favor bestowed on the lesser. I will. I will. You know, how uh, Satan does the five I wills. But true grace comes from our Lord. By grace are ye saved through faith. Okay. And will shew mercy on whom I will shew mercy. It's up to the Lord. And he said. Thou canst not see my face. For there shall no man see me and live. And the Lord said behold. There is a place by me, and thou shalt stand upon the rock. And it shall come to pass, while my glory passeth by, that I will put thee in a cliff of the rock, and will cover thee with my hand while I pass by. And I will, and I will take away mine hand, and thou shalt see my back parts, but my face shall not be seen. Why is that? Because Moses and the children of Israel were following the Lord into the land. See, they were on a journey to go into the promised land. But today, see, why didn't he show him his face? Because like I said, seeing the back. When you see someone's back, what are you doing? You are following them, aren't you? Uh-huh, uh-huh. But the face, and I will take away mine hand, and thou shalt see my back parts, but my face shall not be seen. Why? But yet people... We're able to see the face of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is our Father. Well, that's because it wasn't revealed yet. See? 
God manifest in the flesh was not yet. Okay? That's why he didn't show Moses his face. Because it would be revealed later when he came on earth to give unto them the kingdom of heaven. To offer unto them the kingdom of heaven. Okay? Just like... It wasn't this dispensation. It wasn't revealed until Paul and stuff like that. Later revelation. That's why Moses didn't get to see his face. Okay? That's why the disciples and those at that time were able to see the face of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Because that was the time appointed for the Mashiach to come upon earth and to offer the kingdom of heaven unto the Jews. Okay? So that's why he didn't see his face, because they, he was leading them into the promised land. Okay, Like I said, in this dispensation, I've talked about this with you before, in this dispensation, the dispensation of the law, it was faith and works, having faith in what God will do, and the works were, of course, blood sacrifices with animals, because the blood atones for the soul. Okay, but it was the blood of God that make a per made a perfect atonement for the soul. We've talked about that before, okay? So he was following the Lord. That's why he saw his back parts and not his face. Kingdom of heaven. Not following. Here I am. Here I am. I'm offering you the kingdom of heaven. See? You get it? Okay? Pretty interesting, isn't it? Now go back to... Oh, oh wait, wait. We got one more here to look at for verse 1. Psalm 9. Psalm 9. We want verses 13 on to verse 20. Psalm 9. Not Job. Psalm 9, verses 13 on to verse 20. Have mercy upon me, O Lord. Consider my trouble which I suffer of them that hate me. Thou that liftest me up from the gates of death, that I may shew forth all thy praise in the gates of the daughter of Zion. I will rejoice in thy salvation. In thy salvation. Shew me thy way. The heathen are sunk down in the pit that they made. In the net which they hid is their own foot taken. Remember this because this will come into play later. The Lord is known by the judgment which he executeth. The wicked is snared in the work of his own hands. Hegeon Shilah. The wicked shall be turned into hell, and all the nations that forget God, for the needy shall not always be forgotten. You remember that, right? The needy shall not always be forgotten. The expectation of the poor shall not perish forever. Arise, O Lord, let not man prevail. Let the heathen be judged in thy sight. Put them in fear, O Lord, that the nations may know themselves to be but men and not God. Shilah. Back to Psalm 94. Verses 2 on to verse 4 now. Lift up thyself, thou judge of the earth. Render a reward to the proud. And it's only through pride cometh contention. Okay? The sin of Satan was pride. Okay? Lord, how long shall the wicked... How long shall the wicked triumph? How long shall they utter and speak hard things and all the workers of iniquity boast themselves? Oh, oh, dear brother, yeah, sister. They're, they're boasting it, aren't they? They're boasting their wickedness. They're not even, they're flaunting it. They're not even hiding it. They boast themselves in their iniquity. It's like, uh, well, uh, Ray Charles could see it. <laughs> you know? Habakkuk. Habakkuk. Chapter 1. Habakkuk. Come on, fingers. Work with me, not against me. <laughs> Habakkuk. Chapter 1. Habakkuk is right after Nahum, just so you know. Habakkuk chapter 1, verses 1 under verse 4. The burden which Habakkuk, the prophet, did see. Again, 
O Lord, how long shall I cry, and thou wilt not hear, even cry out unto thee of violence, and thou wilt not save? Why dost thou shew me iniquity, and cause me to behold grievance, grievance? For spoiling and violence are before me. And there are though and there are that rise up, raise up strife and contention. Yeah. Yeah. Especially those who are calling themselves of the church of the living God. Yeah. Yeah. Therefore the law is slack. And judgment doth never go forth. For the wicked doth compass about the righteous. Therefore wrong judgment proceedeth. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. See, we're behind enemy uh, lines, brethren. And we are surrounded, aren't we? All right, verses 5 on to verse 7 in Psalm 94. They, the wicked, break in pieces thy people, O Lord, and afflict thine heritage. <laughs> the psalmist here, we don't know who wrote this psalm. The Lord is the author, but we don't know who wrote it. Uh, the psalmist is reminding the Lord. It's like, hey, 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 Lord, look. <laughs> look what they're doing to us, Lord. Oh, Lord, how long, right? They slay the widow and the stranger and murder the fatherless. Yet they say, the Lord shall not see, neither shall the God of Jacob regard it. <laughs> yeah. What, God's blind, right? Yeah, Psalm 109. Psalm 109. Psalm 109, verses 100, verse 5 to start. Hold not thy peace, O God of my praise, for the mouth of the wicked and the mouth of the deceitful are opened against me. They have spoken against me with a lying tongue. They compass me about also with words of hatred. <laughs> yeah. And fought against me without a cause. See, in their little uh, pea brains, their causes that were saved and they're not. But we have given them no cause other than the fact that we are telling them truth because we want to see, uh, like our Lord, would have everyone to get saved and come to repentance. Okay. For my love, they are, for my love are, wait, for my love, they are my adversaries. But I give myself unto prayer. The more I love you, the less, more, the less I'm loved. You try to show love to some of these people out there? True, true love. True love is truthful. True love is also tactful truth. Okay, you got to remember that. I've heard, I've heard brethren, it's like, well, I was telling them the truth. It's like, well, yeah, you were, brother, but you could have been a little bit more tasteful about it. Okay? You could have been just a little. There's a time and a purpose for everything under heaven. Yes. Yes, we are. We, we value truth over feelings. Of course. But, you know, you know the old saying, when it rains, it pours. There's a time and place for everything. Okay? Remember, be tactful, be tasteful, okay? And the, the wisdom that comes from above is first pure, easy to be entreated, okay? You can use truth as a weapon and, you know, and rub it into people's face and go ahead and piss on their foot while you're at it. That's why it's important to be, Lord, chew me thy way, see? Because, brethren, I'll tell you what, I've, I've blown that myself on many occasions where I have taken the sword and just bashed people over the head and turned them away. See, but that was my doing, okay? The Lord gave a little nudge, but then what do we do sometimes? We like to add on to it as if that's not enough, right? I've had some of you said that just a few words in a video have pricked your heart. Just a few words sometimes. 
That's why, shew me thy way, Lord, okay? For my love they are my adversaries, and you show love unto these people by giving them truth from Scripture. But I give myself unto prayer, and they have rewarded me evil for good and hatred for my love. You ever been spit on? Huh? You ever have gravel kicked at you before? <laughs> I've seen <laughs> and I've experienced when you share with people, especially in Romans chapter 3, verses 10 on to verse 19, about what God says about you, the lost, I have seen the reaction of these lost people when confronted with that truth. But why do you think the easy believism heretics want to avoid that? Yeah, you know, shoot me thy way. Yeah, thy way, you scum. You're no good. Hi, hi. But see, the lost people don't want to hear that. And they have rewarded me evil for good and hatred for my love. And then... In Psalm 109, it talks about some of the things that were fulfilled by Judas Iscariot. But we're going to skip a little in this and go to verses 17 on to verse 20 now. About these people that are being talked about here in Psalm 94. How they, they break in pieces thy people, O Lord, and afflict thine heritage, and slay the widow and the stranger, and murder the fatherless. Yet they say, the Lord shall not see, neither shall the God of Jacob regard it. Verses 17 on to verse 20 in Psalm 109 now. As he loved cursing, yeah, 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 so let it come unto him. As he delighted not in blessing, so let it be far from him. As he clothed himself with cursing like as with his garment, so let it come into his bowels like water and like oil into his bones. Let it be unto him as, a, as the garment which covereth him. Now, and remember in Jude where it talks about where they hate the garment, even the garment spotted by the flesh? But yet here, let it be unto him as the garment which covereth him, Cursing and foulness cover you? That's the covering of your spirit that comes from your father, the devil. Yeah. Interesting, huh? And for a girdle wherewith he is girded continually. Just like I've told you tons of times. Sooner or later, they will expose themselves. They shoot themselves in the foot all the time. All the time. You just need to pray that you have eyes to see. Let this be the reward of mine adversaries from the Lord and of them that speak evil against my soul. Y'all going to pay. You're going to pay for deceiving people with your disgusting, vile, easy believism. You're going to pay. You're going to pay for preaching the love gospel. You're going to pay for your lordship salvation. You're going to pay for your heresies. You're not going to get away with it. You ain't getting away with squat. Okay? And and, and, and verse 7. Or and, and verse 7 here in Psalm 94. Yet they say, The Lord shall not see, neither shall the God of Jacob regard it. Ecclesiastes chapter 8. Ecclesiastes chapter 8. <laughs> and see, these devils know this. These devils know this. This, this is their best life now. This is their best life now. Okay? Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verses 9, under verse 14. All this have I seen and applied my heart unto every work that is done under the sun. There is a time wherein one man ruleth over another to his own hurt. And so I saw the wicked buried, who had come and gone from the place of the holy, and they were forgotten in the city where they had so done. This is also vanity. Why? Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. Therefore, the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. 
though a sinner do evil a hundred times, and his days be prolonged, yet surely I know that I shall be well with them that fear God, which fear before him. To place here, go to Second Peter. Second Peter chapter 3. Second Peter chapter 3. Verses 8 on to verse 9. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. Remember, our Lord lives outside of our time, okay? The Lord is not slack concerning his promise as my, some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us word not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to belief. Repentance. Repentance. Not everybody is going to, though. See, with that little thing I just did, they, they're thieves and robbers. They go, easy believers and brethren is the most dangerous heresy that you and I are encountering at this time before the redemption of the purchased possession. Okay? Lordship salvation eh, makes people feel good. Heresy. The love gospel is the, the love gospel is like right there, the kissing cousin of easy believism. It's easy believism, which is the deadliest of all that we are facing, this close to the redemption of the purchased possession. Okay? And God doesn't want people to everyone to He doesn't want to send everyone to hell. But see, you got to come to him on his terms, not your own. If you, go, if you don't go through the door, you know, if you're booting the door, <laughs> you're going to go up some other way, right? Yeah, you're booting the door out of the way, not going through it. Going up some other way. You got to come to the Lord on his terms. Broken. The repentance is of your self-righteousness. Godly sorrow. <coughs> it's your fault. It's your fault. Be a man, boy. Come on. Come on. Man up. Come on. Man up. It's my fault. I can't blame anyone else. It's my fault. No one else's. And in fear of the Lord, call upon his name. And hopefully he save you. Because, because, no, God doesn't want to see anyone go to hell. No, he doesn't. But God is just. God is known by his judgment. Do you realize God's love is judgment? Why? Because he judges you faithful. Because you came to him on his terms. He judges you saved. Okay? But not everybody is going to come to repentance. Not everybody is going to be saved. Salvation is there to be had for everybody. But not everybody is going to go on onto him his way. And if you don't come to him his way, you're his enemy and his wrath is for you. We've talked about that before. Okay? Verse 10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Go back now to Ecclesiastes chapter 8. Picking up at verse 13. But it shall not be well with the wicked. Neither shall he prolong his days which are as a shadow, because he feareth not before God. There is no fear of God before their eyes. There is a vanity which is done upon the earth, that there be just men, unto whom it happeneth according to the work of the wicked. Again, there be wicked men to whom it happeneth according to the work of the righteous. I said that this also is vanity. Psalm 94 now, verse 8, understand ye brutish among the people and ye fools who say in their heart there is no God, 
When will ye be wise? Be wise, fear the Lord. And of course for this, brutish, brute. Yeah, understand ye brutish among the people. Brutish, being a brute. What is a brute? Someone who isn't saved, a natural man. Go to Jude. Go to Jude. Jude verses 8 on verse 10. Wait. Verses 10 on to verse 13 in Jude. Jude don't have chapters. But these speak evil of things which they know not. No as to a relationship. I, I've seen lots of these devils who have a head knowledge. But no relational knowledge. Okay? There's a big difference. And, and those who only have a head knowledge, you can tell by their so-called preaching and teaching. You can, you can tell, okay? But these speak evil of those things which they know not, but what they know naturally, unregenerate, as brute beasts, which have no understanding, fear of the Lord or departing from evil. In those things they corrupt themselves. Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain and ran greedily after the heir of Balaam, who put stumbling blocks before the children of Israel. The heir of Balaam, integrating, integrating, bringing in every kind of heresy under heaven into what is called Christianity. Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain. Cain was the, the line of Cain was destroyed with the flood. And ran greedily after the heir of Balaam for reward, and perished in the gainsaying of Korah. These are spots in your feasts of charity, self-sacrifice. When they feast with you. Yeah, infiltrators. Feeding themselves without fear, no fear of God. Clouds they are without water, <laughs> full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. Carried about of winds. Have you heard this? Have you heard this? Yeah, you know, unstable, <laughs> up and down like a sea, like the sea. Her ways are movable that thou canst not know them. <clears throat> Carried about of winds, trees whose fruit withereth, without fruit, twice dead, second death. Plucked up by the roots, raging waves of the sea, foaming out their own shame. Wandering stars, to whom is reserved the, dark, the blackness of darkness forever. And stars also could be a reference unto angels, remember, too. Because remember in Revelation chapter 12, he moved, takes uh, with him a bunch of the stars, okay? Wandering stars, false spirits, not false spirits, lying spirits and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, verses 9 and 10 in Psalm 94. You ain't getting away with nothing. They're not getting away with anything, brethren. You know, my dear, dear friend, I, 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 we, we pray for you, but um, it's, it's a good thing to have righteous indignation. We can have righteous indignation against the evil. But don't let that anger consume you. Hi! 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 I'm speaking to myself, too. See, because I, I can mention many people who I know of who let their anger get the best of them and they just make utter um, imbeciles of themselves. And I've done that in videos before. I've made an imbecile of myself, an embezzle of myself by letting my anger get the better of me too. Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Remember, he that planted the ear shall not shall he not hear? He that formed the eye shall he not see? 
They ain't getting away with it, brethren. They ain't getting away with it. He that chastiseth the heathen, shall not he correct? He that teacheth man knowledge, shall not he know? Jeremiah chapter 2. Jeremiah chapter 2. Not Isaiah, Brad. Jeremiah chapter 2, verses 29 on to verse 37. Jeremiah chapter 2, verses 29 on to verse 37. Wherefore will ye plead with me? Going to the Lord like making your case. Remember, plead is not this, oh, 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 oh plead. No, pleading as with the lawyer. Going to the Lord, it's like, well, look, Lord, I've, have we not? Have I not danced for you? Have I not cast out devils in your name? Have I not done good works in your name? Then he'll say, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye who work iniquity. Wherefore will ye plead with me? Ye all have transgressed against me, saith the Lord. Wait, you're going to come to the Lord with, oh, well, I'm a good person? <laughs> okay. In vain have I smitten your children. They receive no correction. Your own sword hath devoured your prophets like a destroying lion. O generation, see ye the word of the Lord. How do they see the word of the Lord? Well, reading it, yes. But also see how the word of the Lord works in those, his ambassadors, who have the ministry of reconciliation, that have the word of reconciliation. Okay? O generation, see ye the word of the Lord. Have I been a wilderness unto Israel, a land of darkness? Wherefore, say my people, we are lords. We will come no more unto thee. Can a maid forget her ornaments or a bride her attire? Yet my people have forgotten me, days without number. Why trimmest thou, why trimmest thou thy way to seek love? Therefore hast thou also taught the wicked ones thy ways. These church buildings where these Christians go to, they are there to teach lost people religion. That's what they're there for. And look at what the church buildings produce. A bunch of lost people who are pretending, acting as what the world calls a Christian. And isn't it strange that Christian comes from as a term that the worldly people labeled on the church of the living God. <laughs> isn't that something? Yeah. Also in thy skirts is found blood, is found the blood of the souls of the poor innocents. I have not found it by secret search, but upon all these it's, it's blatant. It's brazen today. I sent out uh, to some of the brethren, my young friend from Alabama, I love you. Sorry I haven't gotten in contact with you. Shoot me your valid email so you can be incorporated into the thing that we do by email. But I sent out this thing on email about Trump. And it was superimposed, but someone put an SJ on there. It was pretty interesting. It, 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 it's blatant, people. The blatant wickedness of the Jesuits, of Satan, going on right now. It, it's, it's like, I have not found it by secret search. They're not hiding it anymore. They're not going to get away from it. They're not going to get away with it, though. Remember that. Don't ever forget that. They ain't getting away with it. Yet thou sayest, because I'm innocent, surely his anger shall flee from me, uh, shall turn from me, excuse me. Behold, I will plead with thee, because thou sayest, I have not sinned. See, verse 35, instruction and righteousness, you got this Christians. Well, I haven't sinned. I'm living like the world, just like the world. Yet, he's not going to be mad because I just believe. 
And then, behold, I will plead with thee as a lawyer. Not, oh, please. No, as a lawyer. As a lawyer pleads his, ca his case, cause, unto the judge. Okay? Why gaddest thou about so much to change thy way? Thou also shalt be ashamed of Egypt, as thou wast ashamed of Assyria. Why do you gaddest thou about so much to change thy way? An outward change, not an inner conversion not, that stems from being a new creature. Again, you might say, oh Brad, you're, you're just being nitpicky. <laughs> How many people out there have a changed life, but yet are not new creatures? Okay? Okay? I, yeah, genius. I, I know what you're saying when you say change life gospel. I get it. But Alcoholics Anonymous, they have a changed life? People can have a changed life by going through some program? May, you can have a changed life, but yet not be a new creature. Look at the verse. Why gettest thou about so much to change thy way? Thou also shalt be ashamed of Egypt and type the world as thou wast ashamed of Assyria. Yea, thou shalt go forth from him and thine, and thine hands upon thine head. For the Lord hath rejected thy confidences and thou shalt not prosper in them. Your confidences, you're saved because you just believe. Yeah. Oh, you, you, you in for... You're in for a rude awakening if you're alive when we get caught up. You're in for a really rude awakening. Wish it wasn't that way, but... And Psalm 139 now. Psalm 139. Psalm 139, verses 1 under verse 12. Remember, they're not, they're not going to get away with anything. The Lord sees everything. And God is judge. He is known by his judgment. God is a God of judgment. God's love is a result of his judgment. God is first a God of judgment. Yes, God is love. Yes, but God is a God of judgment. His love proceeds from judgment. Okay? And yet, these Christians with their Jesus. Oh, oh, and I've seen examples of this with these screenshots. It's disgusting. It's disgusting. And the blasphemy of some of these people. Hello, so-and-so. I am God. It's like, what? You vomitous landmass. Shut up. God is God of judgment. By his judgment, says he is known. He makes a judgment. Okay? God's love is the result of his judgment. What a concept. Verses 1 and verse 12 in Psalm 139. Again, Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. Thou knowest my down sitting and mine uprising. Thou understandest my thought afar off. Thou compassest my path and my lying down and art acquainted with all my ways. That's for both save and loss. Okay? He knows what we're doing. He knows everything. You're not doing anything in secret that the Lord's not going to see or know about. Remember that, brethren, when it comes on to these devils. Remember that. Remember that. And you devils who have given yourself over that you know that, so you're having your best life now. <laughs> Roll up that cigarette and puff, pal. Okay? For there is not a word in my tongue, but lo, O Lord, thou knowest it altogether. Thou hast beset me behind and before, and laid thine hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high, I cannot attain unto it. Whither shall I go from thy spirit, or whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. Yeah, yeah. See, Hollywood wants a lot of people to believe that 
Satan is in hell on a throne and God is up in heaven on a throne and they're like two no <laughs> no uh, if I make my bed in hell behold thou art there to to borrow a phrase from somebody um, Satan doesn't rule hell God does oh but you you Christians with your little uh, effeminate my Jesus who loves everybody yeah. no remember hell is not being separated from God's presence because right there if I make my bed in hell behold thou art there and remember the flame of their the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever in the presence of the Lamb Let's continue. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me and thy right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. Yea, the darkness hideth not from thee, but the night shineth as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to thee. No hiding anything from the Lord. Not going to do it. Not going to happen, man. They're, they ain't getting away with it. You're not getting away with it. All right. Back to Psalm 94, verse 11. The Lord knoweth the thoughts of man that they are vanity. And of course, of course, just a couple of verses. Psalm 39. Some familiar verses here. They ought to be familiar to you. Psalm 39. Psalm 39, verses 4 and 5. Lord, like we read, similar to Psalm 90, the prayer of Moses. Lord, make me to know mine end and the measure of my days, what it is, that I may know how frail I am. Weak in body, but also frail in mind. The Lord knows your thoughts, every one of them. You know, God, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, you know, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. He knew people's thoughts. Can't I don't even want to know how that vexed it, our Lord. But <laughs> verse 5. Behold, thou hast made my days as an handbreadth, and mine age is as nothing before thee. Verily, every man at his best state is altogether vanity. Shalah. At your best state, your best thoughts. Oh well, that, I think that I think that would be a good thing to do for the Lord. It's vanity. It's vanity. It's vanity. What does it say here? The Lord knoweth the thoughts of man that they are vanity. Oh boy, <laughs> Psalm one hundred forty four. Psalm one hundred forty four. One hundred forty four. Excuse me. And to you who, no, I don't think, I'm not, if you get offended for me saying it like that, I'm sorry. That's, anyway. Psalm 144, verses 3 on to verse 4. Lord, what is man that thou takest knowledge of him? Oh, but you ask a Catholic, the Jesuits, these devils who, who worship flesh. What is man? Oh, man's everything. Because they worship flesh. <laughs> or the son of man that thou makest account of him. Man is like to vanity. His days are as a shadow that passeth away. Vanity. Man at his best is vanity. The Lord knoweth the thoughts of man. Back in Psalm 94. The Lord knoweth the thoughts of man that they are vanity. Verses 12 on to verse 13. Blessed is the man whom thou chastenest, O Lord, and teachest him out of thy law, that thou mayest give him rest from the days of adversity until the pit, until the pit be digged for the wicked. Psalm 119, he. Psalm 119, he. What's the matter? What's the matter? You don't know what that is? Why not? Why not? 
my my wife, you know, she has a set of scriptures that doesn't have the um, headings upon them. Okay, she doesn't have she doesn't have a set of scriptures. See the heading right here. See that where my finger is. He, okay. He is verses thirty four on to verse forty in Psalm one nineteen. Um, my wife is going is getting a set of scriptures, super large print that has the heading of the alphabet in there. Just a side note, but Psalm one nineteen he verses thirty three on to verse forty. Teach me, O Lord, the way of thy statutes, and I shall keep it unto the end. Give me understanding, and I shall keep thy law, departing from evil. And I shall keep thy law. How do you get understanding? Teach me, O Lord, the way of thy statutes. Okay? Give me understanding, and I shall keep thy law. Yea, I shall observe it with my whole heart. Make me, go, make me to go in the path of thy commandments. Shew me thy way. For therein do I delight. Incline my heart unto thy testimonies and not to covetousness. God hates covetousness. God hates covetousness. Yes, we are to covet the best spiritual gifts. And those in coveting the spiritual gifts that come from our Lord, the spiritual gifts unto us are to be given unto others. Okay? But coveting the things of this world, God hates it. God hates it. Okay? Turn away mine eyes from beholding vanity, and quicken thou me in thy way. In thy. Quicken. Make alive. Make me alive in thy way. Make me alive in your way. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. Amen. Amen. Okay. Establish thy word unto thy servant, who is devoted to thy fear. Turn away my reproach, which I fear, for thy judgments are good. Behold, I have longed after thy precepts. Quicken me in thy righteousness. Verse 14 and 15 in Psalm 94. For the Lord will not cast off his people, neither will he forsake his inheritance. You can read that in Romans 11. But judgment shall return on to righteousness. And all the upright in heart shall follow it. And, but judgment shall return on to righteousness. And of course, this now this is not in, in the notes here, but in uh, Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And when you look at that verse again, verse 15 in Psalm 94, but judgment shall return unto righteousness. The death, burial, and resurrection was judgment on this world, on Satan, on sin. And when you come to him on his terms according to his way because of that judgment God's love is for you God's love dear people is his judgment he is first a God of judgment he is first a God of judgment <laughs> I mean I mean how can you how can you get away from that how can you get away from that? You can't. You can't. Verses 14 and 15 again. For the Lord will not cast off his people, neither will he forsake his inheritance. But judgment shall return unto righteousness, and all the upright in heart shall follow it. 1 Samuel chapter 24. 1 Samuel chapter 24. 
What's that? What are you, what are you doing there, Brad? What is that? <laughs> First Samuel chapter 24, verses 9 on to verse 15. Check this out. This is the thing that was going on between David and King Saul, okay? King Saul, who was tormented by an evil spirit, okay? That troubled him, okay? And this is when uh, David had a chance to kill him, but he didn't. Check this out. And David said to Saul, Wherefore hearest thou men's words, saying, Behold, David seeketh thee, seeketh thy hurt. And someone who is tormented with an evil spirit will be like that. Uh, everybody's out to get you. The whole world revolves around you. It's all about you. Every single thing he says is about you personally. A little guilty conscience you got there, there, uh, there, huh, kiddo, huh? Yeah? Yeah? Behold, this day thine eyes have seen how that the Lord had delivered thee today into mine hand in the cave. And some bade me kill thee, but mine eye spared thee. <clears throat> and I said, I will not put forth my hand against my Lord. Why? For he is the Lord's anointed. So David here made a judgment. Okay, think about it. He had to make a judgment call. Uh, Saul was his anointed. It's like, okay, if I kill him, it, he's, he is his anointed, even though he said, I'm going to uh, rule in his stead. Best not mess with the Lord's anointed. He made a judgment call. And how are you supposed to know what is right unless you are judging? Judging according to the scriptures. See, God lets you know what is right according to his word, okay? And you are to judge. Watch out for these devils who say, don't judge me. Don't judge me. Let's continue. Moreover, my father, see, yea, see the skirt of of thy robe in my hand for in for in that I cut off the skirt of thy robe and killed thee not know thou and see that there is neither evil nor transgression in mine hand and I have not sinned against thee yet thou huntest my soul to take it the Lord judge between me and thee and the Lord avenge me of thee but mine hand shall not be upon thee. Why? Because vengeance belongs to him. And the Lord will judge. The Lord is our judge. As saith the proverb of the ancients, wickedness proceedeth from the wicked, but mine hand shall not be upon thee. After whom is the king of Israel come out? After whom dost thou pursue? After a dead dog? After a flea? The Lord therefore be judge, and judge between me and thee, and see, and plead my cause, and deliver me out of thine hand. See, you got to remember, when these Christians say to you, don't judge me, we're not judging you, every time, every single time, don't tell me about my sin. Don't tell me, you know, speak unto me smooth things, prophesy deceits. Don't tell me what the scriptures has to say about what I'm doing is wrong. And who are you to tell me? You know, take the mud out of your own eye kind of thing, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Matthew chapter 25. Check this out. Matthew chapter 25. Matthew chapter 25. Gotta remember, Matthew chapter 24 is about the time of Jacob's trouble. Matthew chapter 25. Okay? <laughs> but... This is before the death, burial, and resurrection. Before the death, burial, and resurrection, okay? So doctrinally, this is still the Old Testament. This is instruction in righteousness, which we desperately need right now, okay? But Matthew chapter 25, verses 20 on to verse 21 first. The thing about the talents, about how our Lord gave to these people, okay? We've talked about this before, but we're going to talk about it again in context of this. First, let's start with verses 20 and 21. And so he that had received five talents 
came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Now, note the guy who had received the five talents. His first thing he went to the Lord is like, Look, Lord, here, you gave me this. You entrusted me with this. And this is what you led me to do with what you have given me. See, Lord, here, it's yours. It's all you. It's all you. You gave this to me, and because you gave this to me, this is what was done with what you gave me. Okay? And the Lord judged him. The Lord judged him. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Good and faithful servant. Because the Lord had given him five talents, and what did he do? Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. He did something with what the Lord gave. He shared with what the Lord had given him. Okay? And the Lord judged him. But now, looking at verses 24 and verse 30. We've talked about this before. But I understand that most people who see these videos, their attention span is only on the newest one and only those who are truly interested in learning anything of scripture are the ones who will look at older videos. I get that, but uh, verses 24 and verse 30. Then he which had received one talent came and said, now verses 21 and verse 21, beseeching the Lord in humility and mercy. It's like, Lord, you gave me this. And this is what has been done because of what you had given me. You, Lord, entreating the Lord first, saying, all giving praise to the Lord. Okay? Look at what this guy does. Okay? Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art an hard man. Reaping where thou hast not sown, and gathering where thou hast not strawed, so while the, while the other guy in verse 20 is humbly beseeching the Lord, humbly like, Lord, you gave this to me. What is this guy doing? Number one, he's before the Lord. But number two, he's accusing, making accusation. I knew that he called him a hard man and that reaping where thou hast not strong, I hath not hast not sown, and gathering where thou hast not straw. So, what is he saying? He's a hard man, but reaping where thou hast not sown, and gathering where thou hast not straw. Why are you, Lord? Why are you, my king? Why are you, my God? Who are you that you're my king? Accusation. You know? Yeah, I sinned, but the woman that thou gavest me, she did give me of the tree and I did eat. Verse 25. And I was afraid and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there thou hast thy design. So he questioned his authority, accused him of being a hard man and then questioned his authority. And then what he had given him, just one mere talent. Just one thing. And because he questioned him. He hid it as if the Lord wasn't worthy. I mean, he questioned his authority right there in verse 24, didn't he? Who are you? You're a hard man. You, you, you're reaping where you haven't sown and gathering where you have not straw. Who are you? You're giving me this? Um, you know what? I'll just put it over there. Wasted it. And obviously this guy thought little of his Lord, where in verse 20 and 21, the guy who was given five talents. And I love this. I love this. His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant. And he repeats it back to him. Like who you think you are, huh? Who you who you think you who you think you're talking to? 
you wicked devils out there who speak against our Lord Jesus Christ all the while claiming to be a Christian. Yeah, yeah. It's guys like you that is the reason why I refuse to be associated with the word Christian. Okay? But look what he says. Thou knewest that I reap where I sowed not and gathered where I have not strawed. Who are you to speak to me like that? Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers, and then at my coming I should have received mine own with usury. Who are you to talk to me? I gave you something. You should have at least given it to somebody. But no. See, because this guy, what did he do? He questioned him, he, he, he accused him, and then doubted his authority. Hence, you get it? Therefore, take therefore the talent from him, and give it unto him which hath ten talents. For unto every one that hath shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he hath. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. <laughs> but see, the Lord make a, made a judgment. He judged the first uh, servant righteous and the other one wicked. And we who are his ambassadors, we are to judge with this, the authorized version, as our standard, not our feelings. Not our feelings. Why? Why is that? Uh, the Lord knoweth the thoughts of man that they are vanity. Okay? And let's go to something that a lot of these heretics like to really take out of context. We're only going to touch a little of it. Uh, Ezekiel chapter 18. Ezekiel chapter 18, verses 30 on to verse 32. Therefore I will judge you, O house of Israel, everyone according to his ways, saith the Lord God. Repent and turn yourselves from all your transgressions so iniquity shall not be your ruin. Cast away from you all your transgressions whereby ye have transgressed, uh, transgressed and make you a new heart and a new spirit. For why will ye die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of him that dieth, saith the Lord. Wherefore, turn yourselves and live ye. And look at verse 23. Have I any pleasure at all that the wicked should die, saith the Lord God, and not that he should return from his ways and live? See, people like to take these verses here in Ezekiel 18, and like to say, well, God doesn't want anyone to die. God, you know, God doesn't rejoice at the death of the wicked. And you're right. But see, there's a condition. Even today, if you reject his salvation, you are his enemy. That is made plain in the scriptures. If you reject what he has done for you, and don't come to him on his terms, but are a thief and a robber and go up another way. You're his enemy. His wrath is for you. Okay? God, God wants everyone to be saved, but not everybody is going. We've talked about this before. Okay? The condition is that the evil repent. What are they repenting of? Their self-righteousness. Okay? Beware when people come to Ezekiel 18 to justify that God is just <laughs> crying over people who go to hell, who reject him. <laughs> it, it's, it's right there, verse 23. Have I any pleasure at all that the wicked should die? It, it, see, it seems that they stop with that said the Lord God, and not that he should return from his ways and live, repent. 
they, they, they like to stop midway in the verse and not continue with the repenting. And then you get these Catholic coadjutor Jesuit devil scumbags with their easy believism. Well, just believe. Yeah. Watch out for these people who go to Ezekiel 18 when talking about how God is going to kill the wicked who do not come to him on his terms, but reject him. All these wicked devils here on YouTube, the enemies of our Lord, they're going to hell. And our God is just right, fair, and equal. And they deserve to go there because they have rejected the Lord. He is right, fair, and just. He is a God of judgment. He would not rather see these people go to hell. But you're going to hell because you've rejected him and chosen Satan. You're his enemy. His wrath is for you. That's truth, brethren. Beware of people who want to make him into a teddy bear. Okay? Beware of people like that. Be very aware of the, uh, beware of those people, okay? Now, Psalm 94, verses 16 and 17. Who will rise up for me against the evildoers? Or who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquity? Unless the Lord had been my help, my soul had almost dwelt in silence. Psalm 127. Psalm 127. We, me and the Lord, were going through that, and right away it's like, Psalm 127. Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that built it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman walketh, waketh, but in vain. Shew me thy way, Lord. Shew me thy way, your way, Lord. Show me the way that you want me to walk, not the way that I want to walk in. Lo, oh, it is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows, for he giveth his beloved sleep. Lo, children are an heritage of the womb of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. Absolutely, because through childbearing, the lineage, the heritage, that line, that bloodline will continue. Unfortunately, my father's bloodline will die with me because I can't have children. But see, in a sense, in a sense, for instruction in righteousness and we walking as the church of the living God, by our example to scripture, people who come to the Lord on his terms seeing our example living according to scripture. Like Paul said, uh, though you have uh, 10,000 instructor, instructors in Christ, yet have ye not many fathers? And that's not talking about the Catholic priests either, okay? Because I have begotten you through the gospel, okay? Spiritual children, that kind of thing, okay? As arrows are in the hand of a mighty man, so are the children of the youth. Happy is the man that hath his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with the enemies in the gate. Speak with the enemies in the gate. Why? Because they are following the example taught to them by the Lord through the scriptures by us. See, prophesying, okay? Spiritually speaking, the Lord has blessed me, blessed us with children. I know for a fact that there are a few of you who came to the Lord on his terms and he saved you by what the Lord gave me in Let Us Reason Together. I know that. I know that you've you've given testimony to me. And because of that, happy is the man that hath his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with the enemies in the gate. To be honest with you, me not being able to have children, even if my wife were able, I couldn't. 
me not being able to have children is a judgment against me because of my years of sodomy. I understand that. To be honest with you too, I wish I could have children. I wish I could. But see, where physically being able to have children spiritually. See? Because yeah, per, on a personal note, that, that has been something over the years where it's, it, it doesn't, I'm not busted up but because what am I going to do? You know? You know? Um, but that has been over the years something that, you know, you know, here and there. Enough. Enough. Psalm, one, uh, Psalm 94 Verses 18 on to verse 19. When I said, my foot slippeth, thy mercy, O Lord, held me up. And the multitude of my thoughts within me, my comfort, thy, thy comforts, delight my soul. Proverbs 24. Proverbs 24. Proverbs 24. Proverbs 24, verses 13 on to verse 16. My son, eat thou honey, because it is good, and the honeycomb which is sweet to thy taste. So shall the knowledge of wisdom be unto thy soul, now, wisdom, the knowledge of wisdom, the knowledge of the fear of the Lord is comparable unto honey and the honeycomb, which is sweet to thy taste. Okay? When thou hast found it, then there shall be a reward, and thy expectation shall not be cut off. Lay not wait, O wicked man, against the dwelling of the righteous. Spoil not his resting place. For a just man falleth seven times and riseth up again. But the wicked shall fall into mischief. When I said my foot slippeth, thy mercy, O Lord, held me up. In the multitude of my thoughts within me, Thy comforts delight my soul. And of course, this is not part of the notes, but must be mentioned. Psalm 119, Beth. Psalm 119, Beth. Verses 9 on to verse 16. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word? With my whole heart have I sought thee. Oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. Thy word have I hid in mine heart, that I might not sin against thee. Blessed art thou, O Lord. Teach me thy statutes. With my lips have I declared all the judgments of thy mouth. I have rejoiced in the way of thy testimonies, as much as in all riches. I will meditate in thy precepts, and have respect unto thy way. I will delight myself in thy statutes. I will not forget thy word. Oh, beg your pardon. Verses 20 on to verse 21. Psalm 94. Shall the throne of iniquity have fellowship with thee, which frameth mischief by a law? What concord hath Christ with Belial? You can't drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. Okay, come out from amongst them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. Okay. They gather themselves together against the soul of the righteous and condemn the innocent blood. Romans chapter 2. Romans chapter 2. Romans chapter 2. Where are you going? <laughs> Romans chapter 2, verses 1 unto verse 11. Therefore thou art inexcusable, O man, whosoever thou, thou art that judgest, for wherein thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself. 
For thou that judgest doest the same things. Speaking about hypocritical judgment of lost people, okay? It, when you think about it, a lost sinner condemning another lost sinner going to hell or something like that, it's, thou art inexcusable. You read Romans chapter 1. It explains Romans chapter 2 verse 1, okay? But we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which commit such things. And thinkest thou this, O man, that judgest them which do such things, and doest the same, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God? See, this is in context. This is why when the Lord uses you to bring someone unto himself using the Romans road, that's why this is imperative, okay? You begin with Romans chapter 1, which is the condemnation of you lost people. And then the same with chapter 2. And also into chapter 3. Okay? Okay? So let's continue. Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. The goodness of God. He hasn't killed you yet. Even though you're attacking the, the righteous and doing wickedly against those who are of, of the Lord. Okay? The goodness of the Lord, he hasn't killed you yet. If you're alive, not saved, and you're alive today, that's the goodness of the Lord. Okay? But after thy hardness and impentient heart, treasurest up, to, up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. The day of wrath. The time of Jacob's trouble and the revelation of the righteous judgment of God that the church of the living God, the body of Christ, get redeemed before the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? See, we, the church of the living God, we are going to be redeemed, the redemption of the purchased possession before the time of Jacob's trouble, God's wrath upon this earth. Okay? Who will render to every man according to his deeds. To them who by patient continuance and well-doing seek for glory and honor and immortality, eternal life. But unto them that are, look what it says. Don't look at me. Look what that says. Contentious. Like the guy in Matthew chapter 25. You're a hard man. <laughs> Reaping where you have not uh, strawed or sown or something like that. Who are you? Questioning, uh, accusing him and questioning his authority? Mm -hmm. But unto them that are contentious and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation and wrath, tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that doeth evil, of the Jew first and also of the Gentile. But glory, honor, and peace to every man that worketh good, to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. For there is no respect of persons with God. In this dispensation, there's no respect of persons. Okay, Anyone can get saved today. His salvation is there for all. Yes, it is. You just got to come to him on his terms, people. I know that's so hard, isn't it? That's sarcasm, by the way. Verse 22 in Psalms 94. But the Lord is my defense, and my God is the rock of my refuge. Ezra. Ezra. Chapter 8. Ezra chapter 8. Verses 21 on to verse 23. Now this is Israel returning to the promised land after the captivity, after the 70 years and stuff like that. Okay, this is the return. Okay, and Ezra was, um, you know, went forward first, then Nehemiah, stuff like that. But check this out, verses 21 and verse 23. And this is you and I as the church of the living God. Look at where the focus is on. Then I proclaimed a fast there at the river of Ahava, that we might afflict ourselves before our God to seek of him a right way for us. 
and for our little ones, and for all our substance. Fast and afflict ourselves by fasting to seek Lord, our Lord's answers, to seek, to seek the Lord. Okay? How many of you still fast today? For I was ashamed to require of the king that was good to him. But I was ashamed to require of the king a band of soldiers and horsemen to help us against the enemy in the way. Why go to worldly means to protect you from the enemy who could have no power over you unless it was allowed you of the Lord? Because we had spoken unto the king, saying, The hand of our God is upon all them for good that seek him, but his power and his wrath is against all them that forsake him. So we fasted and besought our God for this, and he was entreated for us. Fast. Get everything out of the way so that you can focus on the Lord. But again, this, this nonsensical thing that people like to twist, Ezekiel 18, you know, that God's just, ah, 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 over the wicked going to hell. No! God doesn't want the wicked to go to hell. But if they reject him... And, you know, uh, you know, flip the bird to God, God forbid. God's wrath is for you. God's love is not for you. God's love is at Calvary, the way of the cross, which starts first with death. The death of your self-righteousness. And once he saves you, when you come to him on his terms, remember, our spirit our, and soul are trapped within the skin suit, okay? We're going to struggle with sin, absolutely. But see, coming to him, you need to be broken of your self-righteousness. You're not a good person. And you reject and go another way. You know, you boot the door out of the way so you can go up some other way. Yeah. The hand of our God is upon all them for good that Seek him. But his power and his wrath is against all them. And his wrath. Church of the living God. We are not appointed to wrath. But to obtain salvation. The redemption of the purchased possession. Okay. You lost people. You're appointed for wrath. We're not. We're not. Okay. Okay. And verse 23 in Psalm 94. And he shall bring upon them their own iniquity and shall cut them off in their own wickedness. Yea, the Lord our God shall cut them off. Psalm 7. Psalm 7. Verses 11 on to verse 17. On to verse 17. Beg your pardon. My defense is of God, which saveth the upright in heart. God judgeth the righteous, and God is angry with the wicked every day. If he turn not, he will wet his sword, wet, sharpen it. He hath bent his bow and made it ready. If he turn not, repent, he will wet his sword. Sword of the Spirit. He all he hath also prepared for him the instruments of death. He ordaineth his arrows against the persecutors. Behold, he travaileth with iniquity, and hath conceived mischief, and brought forth falsehood. He made a pit and digged it, and is fallen into the ditch which he made. All you wicked, foul devils. All these evil devils out there, brethren. Remember, this is their time. Okay? This is their time. It's close. We are very close to the redemption of the purchased possession. Okay? We are. It's going to get nasty before it gets there. Because our exit is coming. 
So naturally, they get a little bit more active, right? But they're all going to fall into their own pit. They're not getting away with it. His mischief shall return upon his own head, and his violent dealing shall come down upon his own pate. I will praise the Lord according to his righteousness and will sing praise to the name of the Lord Most High. You know, when you actually think about it, you stop and think about it. You know, to all the devils who I've fought with, what awaits you guys? I don't pity you because you have chosen your, you have chosen your side. So I don't pity you, but what awaits you guys in hell? Mm. Psalm 141. Psalm 141. Lord, I cry unto thee. Make haste unto me. Give ear unto my voice when I cry unto thee. Let my prayer be set forth before thee as incense, and the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Set a watch, O Lord, before my mouth. Keep the door of my lips. Yeah. Like uh, uh, my best friend said, you know, sometimes I got to tell myself, Hey, Brad, shut up. Yeah. Incline not my heart to any evil thing, to practice wicked works with men that work iniquity. Proverbs chapter 1, when they say, throw your lot in with us. Come on. We'll all have one purse. What does he say? Refrain thy foot from them. Get away from them. Don't join yourself with them. Okay? Incline not my heart to any evil thing, to practice wicked works with men that work iniquity, and let me not eat of their dainties. Let the righteous smite me. Amen. It shall be a kindness. And let him reprove me. It shall be an excellent oil. Which shall not break my head. For yet my prayer also shall be in their calamities. Amen. Amen. When the righteous smite me. My prayer shall be in their calamities. And I made mention to some of our brethren. Who are in calamities right now. Remember to pray for our brethren. Pray for one another. Okay. Pray for another, uh, one another. Don't be so selfish in prayer that all you do is pray about yourself. You know, in prayer, I, 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 me, me, me. No, 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 no. 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 In prayer, that's the least place that you ought to be selfish. Even though you are going to the Lord for yourself, obviously, in prayer, because it's a relationship. But knowing that you can speak with God, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, He's going to bend his ear all day for you. When their judges are overthrown in stony places, they shall hear my words, for they are sweet. And that right there, verse 6, is a good comfort that when some of these people, when, when the reality of what they have chosen to do because of deception comes upon them, Maybe the hope will be that they'll have their eyes open and then you as the church of the living God, our Lord will use you in that moment, okay? When their judges are overthrown in stoning places, when those who are ruling over them, who are judging them, okay? An example, someone who has fallen for the lies of the Jesuits and they uh, gone too far and then they find out all that's, wow, this is all wrong. Hopefully someone of the, like it says here, um, they shall hear my words for they are sweet. When their judges are overthrown in stony places, they shall hear my words, for they are sweet. I've, I've heard from people who's like, you know, in a video you warned about something, and then I went and did it, and then I looking back in retrospect, beloved, you know, retrospect looking back, it's like I was warned about it. I was warned about it. I was warned. They shall hear my words, for they are sweet. If your words come from scriptures our bones are scattered at the grave's mouth as when one cutteth and cleaveth wood upon the earth also you can uh, make a reference with Ezekiel chapter 37 on that one but mine eyes 
are unto thee, O God the Lord. In thee is my trust. Leave not my soul destitute. Keep me from the snares which they have laid for me, and the gins of the workers of iniquity. Let the wicked fall into their own nests, whilst that I with all escape. That's what it is, brethren. The wicked are going to fall into their own nets. And we are going to escape. And we need to remember that. And we need to remember that. And we also need to remember something else. Go to Romans chapter 9. Romans chapter 9. We're almost done. Romans chapter 9. Verses 14 on to verse 24. What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? God forbid. For he saith to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. We already saw this. And will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So then it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but God that sheweth mercy. Okay? It's by grace through faith. All right? For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, Even for the same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might shew my power in thee, and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. Therefore hath he mercy on whom he will have mercy, and whom he will he hardeneth. Thou wilt say then unto me, Why doth he yet find fault? For who hath resisted his will? Nay, but, O man, who art thou that replies against God? Shall the thing formed say to him that formed it, Why hast thou made me thus? There are those out there who our Lord is... Some of you is like, Why is our Lord letting these people live? Why is the Lord letting some of these heretics, these deceivers, live? To shew the power of his judgment? Verse 21, Hath not the potter power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor? What if God, willing to shew his wrath, here's the answer to that question, and to make his power known, endured with much long suffering, the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction? Why are some of these devils that I know of personally still alive and still allowed to wreak havoc upon the church of the living God? Oh, because you're a vessel of wrath and he's going to show his power upon you when he destroys you? And hopefully through the destruction of these devils, someone might take notice and actually consider the true and right ways of the Lord. Verse 23. And that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy, which he had afore prepared unto glory, even unto whom, even, even us, whom he hath called, not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles. And remember, everybody has been called, but not everybody is going to come to him on his terms. You, you might look, why, why is God allowing this to happen? Why is he not taking judgment to show the power of his wrath as he did with Pharaoh, making an example? And some of the worst sinners who our Lord saves show the power and the glory in those vessels. Us, I used to be a sodomite, okay? I had a, an affair with a married woman for about, what, three and a half years. I destroyed a marriage. It was me. Okay? The Lord saved me. The Lord saved me. The Lord, if you are saved of the church of the living God, my brother or sister, look at what the Lord has saved you from. And look at, his, at how he is allowing these devils. Keep, keep rattling your big mouth. You know? Keep rattling your mouth. That's what the devils do. You know? 
What if God willing to shew his wrath? You know, you're you digging your own grave, buddy. <laughs> to make his power known, endured with much long uh, much long suffering, the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction. A vessel of wrath fitted to destruction. They have heard the gospel, rejected, chosen Satan. Vessel of wrath fitted for destruction. Children of wrath, children of disobedience. And when the Lord shows his wrath, I need proof that your God exists. You're going to get it, boy. And when you get it, you're going to be you're going to be pissing down your leg. Like a little girl. You had the chance to take, but you didn't take it. Instead, you scoffed at it and chosen the little G God of this world. You fall down and worship him, and all is yours because you're following the little G God of this world. We get caught up. See, brethren, we, when we, the church of the living God, get redeemed, hence the time of Jacob's trouble. Seven years left. And that time of Jacob's trouble, the um, what's going to be coming upon the Jews is going to make the... Uh, Holocaust look like nothing, the devastation and death and destruction, because he who now letteth will let until he be the body of Christ taken out of the way without the body of Christ on earth. No restrainer. See, it is because of the church of the living God, the body of Christ, that God is not pouring his wrath upon this earth. Remember Lot, his daughters, and his wife. He, the angel said, we can't destroy the city until we get you out of here. Okay? He didn't bring the flood on the earth until Noah and his family got into the ark. Do we realize, brethren, once... You know, it's been, what, 2,000 years, this dispensation? Once we are caught up and this dispensation ends... Things are going to start happening muy rápido. And God's wrath is going to be known. And 1 Peter chapter 2, and then we'll end it. 1 Peter chapter 2. 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 21 on to verse 23. 1 Peter chapter 2. Verses 21 on to verse 23. For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example, that ye should follow his steps, who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth, who, when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judgeth righteously. Vengeance is not up to us, it's up to the Lord. Vengeance. That's not self-defense. Defense is another thing. Again, like I said, if you got some schmuck <laughs> telling you that, uh, you know, just lie down and let someone kill you when they're attacking you, that's the devil. God's not for depraved indifference. Vengeance, that's not ours to get. Our Lord is going to have his vengeance. We are going to rejoice when we see the fall of Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots. Our end is glorious. Their end is horrifying. Be comforted, brethren. It's going to get, it's, it's just started. But it's going to get worse and worse as this year continues. Be ready. And we don't know. But don't, don't for a moment think that our Lord has forgotten. And when his wrath comes, oh boy.
that's going to be it for this video. Thank you for watching this. If you do, thank you to all of you for your prayers. Um, thank you. We love you. Um, I'm sorry, too, that I haven't been able to get into contact with some of you as we have liked. Um, things have been getting kind of rough around here. Things have been getting kind of rough. And uh, this Monday, the 24th, my wife goes in for an MRI for it to be official. We already know what's going wrong, and they're just going to make it official. And, um, yeah, that's, yeah. So some rough times are coming for us. As I know for certain that there are rough times for our dear... Like I said, I, I, I didn't ask uh, my, my beloved friend, our dear brother... Floyd to use his name publicly uh, but please keep him in prayer please keep our brother Jeff in prayer please keep the brethren in prayer pray for one another and you know what brethren ask one another how you may pray for them yes the spirit will guide us on how to pray for people but you know it doesn't hurt you to go and ask pray for one another so like I said that's going to be it for this video um, check out uh, our brother Alexander. He did a much better read through of the Secreta Monita than I did. Um, so check that out. Um, when it's all finalized, I will also on my channel here, on this channel that the Lord gave me, uh, I will put that in a playlist for you to watch. So. Anyway, that's going to be it for this video. Going to get this, uh, it's 1.51 my time now. Going to get this uploaded and uh, we love you. Please keep us in prayer for Monday, brethren. Please. It's... Thank you, brethren. We love you. We'll see you in the next video.